Welcome back to the podcast, the ones and zeros of all things metal. I'm Matt. And I'm Jeff. And we got a real short episode to, to, for you today because I didn't hit the record button and we got an hour into our first recording and noticed that I didn't hit the record button. So we are just going to give you a snippet of this, you know, kind of, I guess, what was, oh, shoot, what was that thing back in, in like high school and college that you used to like read books because you didn't actually read the book? <laughs> Cliff notes. Cliff notes. Yes. So we're going to give you the Cliff yeah. Notes version of our hour long episode. <laughs> yes. So this week we, we did uh, Darko, their new album, Oni, and then the Callous Dowboys, um, their new album, Celebrity Therapist. And yeah. we started off with Darko. Um, I think we both said that upon like first listen, it wasn't, uh, it didn't grab us both right away really Mm -hmm. and then the more we listened to it got a little bit better um i i remember saying that i there's something about darko that i just couldn't fall in love with even though i think this album is um better than the first one uh i gave this one a seven and a half the first one was a seven i think matt gave it a seven point seven five yeah i couldn't choose somewhere Somewhere in between a seven and a half and an eight. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, I found that it was hard for me to listen through the album completely all the way through. Like I had to listen to it in short snippets. Um, I had three favorites. I liked Anna, Acid Inject, and Come Home. Uh, and it had so had like a cool intro, some cool grooves. I like the scratchy sounds that they sound effects that they put in there and really throughout the whole album they had some really cool sound effects but we were we were both in agreement that um darko's kind of found like a uh, like a a formula that they stick to which got a little bit repetitive uh they're good at it but mm-hmm. it didn't really change up a lot of their uh sound too much to keep it like completely interesting um and then you want to list your you had five favorites i think yeah so i had five favorites i had hyperkill which i didn't really have a reason to like it i think when we talked about it we just decided that it was more or less like if you wanted to like sum up what darko was this i think was one of the best representations in like the first like 35 seconds of everything that tom barber can do Mm -hmm. uh and instrumentally as and well. instrumentally as well yeah I uh, just and so I think that might have been like what I, what I latched on to because uh, I had that same problem of like I wasn't really into it and I think this was the song where I was like okay I like it now um my next one was Rosaria's fingers which is another Dark Souls reference which we talked about in the first album I'm not gonna go into the lore of it uh, because I would just butcher it and humiliate myself. <laughs> Uh, something about oh yeah and then like there's like a slight pause at like the two minute mark where it makes you almost think like it's over but then it's not so it's kind of cool uh, the next one was evolving uh, at 152 I, I should have wrote down I don't remember why at 152 but I just remember it goes oh that was the rappy bit oh yeah okay. yeah so there's like this cool little rappy part and then it at 207, it just like drops into this really disgusting, nasty breakdown that makes your like turtles, your your turtles, your toes curl up and like your face go all distorted. Like it's it's disgusting, but it's in the best way. Uh my fourth one would have been RTGOB, which I can only presume stands for Revoke the Gift of Breath, uh, which I thought was pretty brutal. And then at 140, I love the the rhythm of the triplets and I when upon first listening I thought it was just the drums like they cut everything out but we kind of listened to it again and kind of discussed it happens so quickly that it just kind of melts everything together so you got like the drums and the gu- guitar all doing these triplets and it's just oh uh, it sounds good uh and then and then oh, I, I remember saying about the evolving the rap part um oh yeah that each time there's a new rap part 
in like a in like a band that introduces it briefly. Mm-hmm. I always expect Matt not to like it, but he but surprisingly it and it ends up sticking with him and probably because of the uh the, the lyrical content rather than that he can relate to rather than yeah. just being about nonsense. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think we both like this one acid inject, right? Yeah, and this yeah. was one that we did a a a, a YouTube react video. to on our on our YouTube channel Blackcast Reacts. Uh this I think was one of the first singles that came out that we both like that one. Just yeah, it was, literally feels like an acid trip. This one and Dragon Chasers, I think were the sing- the first singles that got released. Yeah. But yeah, and then at one point for Acid Inject, I think the biggest note I had that I liked, um, I guess you could hear the full th- reaction on our YouTube channel, but for this little snippet, at one twenty three, there's a part where you like, the vocals kind of like break, they chop it up. So it's like, ah, 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 ah. Uh, so it's kind of, it was just an interesting effect that kind of took place over the whole song or not the whole song, but in that whole, all the instruments and stuff were all cut out and choppy like that. But the fact that he was holding out a line or something like that, it added, I think it just amplified or showed more in the vocals because you kind of expect guitars to be choppy, but vocals being that like sudden and choppy is a little jarring, which was cool. Yeah. And then right after that, one of my favorite parts, I don't have a timestamp, but like yeah. right after that section, I think maybe like one, like 150 mark or something, there was like this like dancey um, effect that I, that I wanted more, some, some more moments like that throughout the album rather yeah. than just having, like they do those like guitar noises really well, but uh, felt a little overused at the more that the album went on. So they're like, more catchier uh, parts like that maybe. And then towards the end, uh, it wasn't exactly like orchestral or symphonic, but they added some like another subtle layer of things to make it feel bigger. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much everything. Yeah. And then my, my third favorite was uh, come home. Yes. And then, uh, cause I like the, Rory was the vocalist for Day Seeker in that one. That was a cool. Mm-hmm. Um, we said it was kind of like Donna ish from their first album, very chill at the beginning, and then came in big and epic. And uh, we went into a whole thing about redo being like the whole <laughs> album in reverse or something, and then Come Home is actually the should be the last song because redo is kind of goofy. Um, yeah, so seven and a half from me and then like 7.75 from Matt for that one. And then we did Callus Dow Boys, uh, Celebrity Therapist is their new album. Um, they're more on the, uh, like the mathier side yeah. of, of uh, metal. Um, Matt had, Matt said that these, these two albums this week were kind of related because he said Callus Dow Boys were like a peaceful chaotic and then, uh, Darko was like a destructive type of chaotic. And so they were kind of two sides of the same coin in terms mm-hmm. of like chaos. Um, yeah. I really like this band because I like math stuff in general. And um, I had, I, I have, I really like the number 12 looks like you as a band. And I, there's gotta be some kind of, number 12 influences in here because some of the vocal, like the gang vocal things that they do really brought me back to like the time of when number 12 had their, their albums mongrel and worse than alone out. Um, I had two favorites, the first two tracks violent astrology and a brief article regarding time loops, uh, violent astrology. I really liked because of how strong of an opener it was. Although I feel like the rest of the album failed to capture that initial chaos, although it did, in in and I agree with Matt on this one, kind of chill out a little bit, um, became more peaceful as the as the album went on. I think we both agree that some of the best things about Violent Astrology were the were the lyrics because there's a lot of movie quotes 
and just a lot to unpack overall in all mm-hmm. of their lyrics for the entire for the entire album. It's just like, what are they even saying? <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, and then my favorite part about a brief article regarding time loops, there was a uh, a riff, similar riffs, but at twenty two seconds it was kind of first introduced, and then fifty five seconds, it's very bouncy, and I like the way that the vocals kind of um, bounce on top of that guitar riff. Uh, very, just very like upbeat, but in like a mathy type of way. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I also agreed. I like violent astrology. That's one of my favorites. Uh, mainly one because of like the lyrics. Just There was what, something about you're not John Wick. You're, just a fucking LARPer or something like that. You're not Jen Wick, you LARPing fuck. That one. There we go. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I just want John Wick being one of my favorite movies, but that was just funny. Uh, there was a quote about, uh, they said your Punisher skull on your Ford and Facebook page. I was like, okay, you can picture, you probably know somebody that looks, you, you can picture exactly <laughs> who they're talking about. I don't know what they're trying to say to that person because I still don't understand what they're saying in this song, but you know who they're talking about. Uh, so I just thought it was, it was good uh, lyrically there. Uh, and then title track was my it's track four. Uh, I said, the song puts you to sleep in a good way. It's just, it it's nice and calming at 142. I love the rhythm Uh, and the delivery of like the lyrics, it was just like, it's softer. And then like everything, every like end of the line hits just right on the note that, or on the beat that it should end on. And it's just like audibly just satisfying. Uh, and then there's little instrumental breaks in, in there where, and then every time they come back in lyrically, it's a little bit faster and a little bit heavier. So it was cool to kind of, you get this like build up over time. And then at 508, there's just like big and bold, like kind of synthy sound that they have. And it's just, once again, like the delivery of the, the vocals, it just hits right and it's big and kind of like punches you in the face. Uh, oh, I, I made a reference about getting hit with a base, uh, w- a wiffle ball bat. Like the, it's like, it's, it, like they don't have like a formula, they have a formula, but it's chaotic enough to where like they don't stick to like one genre or one like specific sound. So it's kind of like they give you a breather, but then they chase after you with like a wiffle ball bat, you know, just to kind of like <laughs> liven it up again. Here we are. It, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then Star Baby, uh, the lyrics at 25 seconds. I think it was uh, God is my pilot. Yes, the Lord is my pilot episode. His arms like power, a power line. His kiss like a stimulated season of television. Uh, every year is like a heaven, heavenly lottery. And then there was another part at the end. Oh, at 317, it just gets really groovy. And the lyrics are just like, they match. They're, they just hit just right. And he says... Um, the home that you said you came with a moment of weakness labeled revelation because I walk into the water buzzing with electrolytes and sacrilege to be praised for the plastic lack of my inspiration I get that it's <sighs> horrendous heinous 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 that's I was, like, I was like looking at that and none of the words in my head we're right. Anyways, yes, heinous. <laughs> Panic button. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like it's none of the H words. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I remember, um, and I remember saying that this whole section kind of felt like something that belonged on a TV show. I don't know where. Yeah. Maybe like a it don't maybe like a compilation or maybe it's like the intro song to a TV show or something. But they were talking about television earlier in the song, and it seemed to fit. I remember listening to this part for the first time and being like, 
Yeah, this kind of sounds like a television show. Interesting sound. Yeah, I so it's almost like, oh, you know what it is? When like the main character like breaks up with his girlfriend for a long time and it's like going through all like the memories or something like they have like yes. a big fight. Like yes. I'm thinking like that 70s show. Yeah. Like Eric and what's her face. Yeah. Donna. Yes. That's what I'm picturing. Like you said it and I was like, I, yeah, I get what you're saying, but where would it fit? And then. Yes. Yeah. I think they, I think they nailed that section. And uh, anything else? I think I don't think we stated our scores yet, or we just started talking about it. Oh no! Yeah, I was gonna say it, and then I looked at uh, Pro Tools, and I said, "Shit." Yeah. So I would say, shit, shit happens for me. I think this was a solid eight. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you on that one. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, uh, while I had like less favorites. I found it easier to just listen through this one straight through because mm-hmm. it, you know, keeps your attention enough at times and um, doesn't, doesn't nearly f- there. There's no formula on this one compared yeah. to Darko. The formula is the kitchen sink. Yes. <laughs> kitchen sink and a whiff of all that. Yes. All right. Well, all right. So, Sorry that we weren't able to give you the full in-depth uh, cover, but we will do better next time. <laughs> I will do better next time. <laughs> I'll just like put my voice up there, just like only me, like responding to everything that you say. <laughs> and then just like big, long silences and then me be just laughing out of nowhere. And... <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think we already agreed that next week we're going to be doing Lorna Shore's new album and we came as Romans. So stay tuned for that. That'll be next. That'll be the next album or okay. next episode that comes out. We're doing albums now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A new thing. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right. See you guys later. Thanks See for later. listening. Thanks.